Welcome back everybody. This is Steve KM9G and today we are going full power. We're going QRO with TO. I've got an Ameritron AL811H amplifier sitting on the shack bench over there. This one comes courtesy of Matt AE4MQ by way of Mike N8YO. Uh, this amp has seen some miles, but we're going to get some more life out of this old girl with some brand new tubes. I'll show you how I put those in and show you how I do my tune-up procedure. I'm pretty new to amps. This is the way that I have been shown how to do it. All the stuff that I can figure out by looking around online at all the other places. If there is a better way to do it, I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. While you're down there, make sure that you hit that join button or the subscribe button or ring the bell or give me that thumbs up or even give me that thumbs down. Whatever one makes you happy makes me happy because I am here for you. See you after the break. Power tools, in the interest of time, not in the interest of brute force. Let's get these 6,000 screws out of this amp. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws, and that wasn't even all of them. Okay, this amp has been repaired and serviced by Mike N8YO, and he has left us with some very nice, delicate work here to secure the tops of the tubes. So I'm going to remove these. And there are lots of warnings all over the place in here that says danger lethal voltage. So I am going to be extra careful with the lethal voltage type issues and make sure that I don't have problems with those types of things. All right, we got those unwrapped and now comes the 811A tubes. This is a set of four. Let's get these guys unwrapped. I'm gonna cheat on these ones here with my trusty pocket knife. All wrapped up nice and double wrap. This, these come from RF parts, pretty fancy little tube. And they look like they are ever so slightly keyed on the bottom. So they should only fit in one way. Okay, so there is a close-up of the bottom of the socket, bottom of the tube. And then if we look down in there at the socket, you can see that it looks like it's only going to fit in there one way. Because even the pins are a little bit of a different diameter. So let's get those installed and we'll be right back. All right, and here is what they look like all installed with their nice little caps on. It's a pretty tight space in there. It's not so bad that you can't uh, figure it out and get your hands in there, but it's uh, not easy to film. So it's kind of the best I can do with the little tiny bit of space that I'm working with. But there you go. Lots of, uh, lots of interesting parts in there. There's a couple of uh, caps down here in the bottom. Some inductors. All the fuses look good. Danger, lethal voltage yet again. And then a safety switch. See, I pushed it, now we're safe. Now we're back to being unsafe. All right, let's get this thing put back together. Okay, this is the stack that I am using here for this video. This is the MFJ267 dummy load. This is also the KD9OLN antenna, and I will have a link up above for a review and tear down and look inside of that. This is the ICOM 7300 radio, and this is the Ameritron AL811H amplifier. Let's get it turned around to the backside, and we'll see what is going on on the backside. Okay, so here we've got the back of the setup, and I want to show you a couple of things. This is how I have it set up for my initial test. 
Uh, what we have is the ICOM IC7300 radio, we have the MFJ dummy load, and we have the amplifier. This is a regular antenna lead coming out of the back of the radio going into RF in on the amplifier, from RF out to the input on the dummy load, and from the input on the dummy load to the output to the antenna. And this here is the send port on the back of the 7300, which is going to the relay port on the back of the amplifier. So RF out to RF in, RF out to input on the dummy load. This will go out to the antenna when we get there. And then this is from the send port down to the relay port. Let's get it flipped around. All right, we've got the old girl in the operating position. We've got the IC7300 up top here. We have the MFJ267 dummy load and watt meter, and we have the Ameritron AL811H amplifier. So all of this stuff is plugged up like we showed earlier in the video. And what we want to do first on the ICOM is go into menu, go into set, go into function, and find transmit delay. And for HF, you want to set that to 25 milliseconds. And what that'll do is that'll keep it from tripping the relay too fast, too often, too frequently, the relay in the amp, and wearing that out. So now we've got that done. Next thing that we want to do is change our output power down pretty low for tuning. Anywhere around 5% is probably going to be good enough. And then we want to take our dummy load and put it up into dummy load mode. So we are transmitting into the dummy load instead of transmitting into the wild blue yonder. Let's look at the scope and let's do the oh, look at the span on the scope and you can see there is no waterfall activity and we switch the dummy load off and there's plenty of waterfall activity. So we are definitely, there's a lot of CW activity, that's looking pretty nice. We are definitely transmitting into the dummy load, so nothing to worry about there. Again, we're down at 5%. Inside of the owner's manual for the amplifier, there is a list of settings for your load and your plate. And you wanna make sure that you start there and then we'll start tuning. So for grins, let's just put these up at the center for both. And then the next thing that we need to focus on is what band we are on on the band selector. And this has bitten me a couple of times. Sometimes I am operating on 20 meters and I have it set for 40 and I can't figure out why I'm not getting a good tune. And it's because I forgot to switch this. So step one, set this to the proper band that you're supposed to be on to match the band that you're on on your radio. Step two is set it from the standby position to the operating position. And then for the meters, the plate and grid meters, I like to have them instead of HV, which just shows me that my transformer is working. I like to have it on IP so that it shows me what my plate and my grid are doing. Okay, so back to the manual. I have written down some fancy notes here on a piece of paper that tell me what's going on. For 20 meters, I am 1.014 to 1 at 14 even as my SWR on my DX Commander antenna. So that's a pretty fantastic SWR match right there. And what it says to do is to start out somewhere in the neighborhood of eight and somewhere in the neighborhood of four. And I'm gonna set this to ready, which is gonna drop a carrier. And again, we're into the dummy load and there's no activity and we are down at 5%. And I key up and I'm getting not a whole heck of a lot of power out. So I wanna change this to move that needle and you can see the needle on the dummy load moving. Let's move this over into SWR meter. Whoops. Move this over in SWR meter so we can see it there too. And you can see that moving just a hair. There it goes. It, it went up a little bit. Let's change the range. There we go. So right about there is the bump on the plate meter. Then we go over to the load meter. And we raise that up, look at that go. All right, now we wanna change this up to some more power. Let's go up to 25. This is an 800 watt amplifier on RIDI. We're dropping a carrier, so it's a 100% duty cycle signal. I do not wanna run the amplifier at 800 watts 
on a full duty cycle. That would just be murder. So I'm going to back it down to half, which would be about 400 watts output. I'm going to change the meter range to high and hit that again. And then we're going to tune it up again, peak that one, and then and that one's not moving a whole heck of a lot. There we go, because we're right already in range. And that is how you tune the amp. The next thing that you can do is change bands. This one is good for, uh, the aux is a 10 meter setting, I believe. 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, 80, and 160. Let's try 40. Let's switch the radio to 40. Let's switch the power back down to five. My 40 meter band is 1.052 at 7192, which is where we already are. I'm gonna switch the mode over to Ritty so I can drop a carrier into my dummy load. And it's telling me, on my handy dandy cheat sheet here, it's telling me 3.8 and eight. So I'm gonna set this to 3.8-ish and set this to eight-ish. Check my power output again, that's good. Change the range on the meter. And then we will spike the plate. And we will, yeah, we were already pretty close. Look at that go. Spike the load, perfect. And you can watch that we're starting to put some heat into the dummy load, which is gonna change the SWR. So we'll let the dummy load cool off a bit. We will switch our back up to, again, 25-ish watts, and we will switch the range to high-low. And 25 in, we should be able to get pretty good output. So 250-ish, there we go with that. Now let the dummy load cool down again. All right, and again, that is the way to tune up when you change bands. So that is all that it takes. It's not as, not as scary and not as intimidating as you might think. And if you back this off a hair and you have a regular radio and a regular tuner because your antenna is not resonant on the frequency that you're on, what you're trying to do is make the radio's 50 watt, 50 watt, 50 ohm input match and output, match the antennas, and I'm pointing at the meter because it's here, match the antennas 50 watt, 50 ohm, I said it again, 50 ohm load, and that may not be 50 ohms because your antenna is out. So you you change your knobs, you adjust your knobs to get the in between setting between the antenna and the radio to be 50 ohms. Your radio likes 50 ohms, that's where it's happy. And then these tuning circuits here will adjust the connection between the two to match. Your amplifier is the same way. Think of your amplifier as an antenna that is not in tune with your radio. I know it's not an antenna, but think of it that way. And that'll make this tuning circuit make a little bit more sense. You want to match the impedance of the tubes with 50 ohms that your radio is expecting and you'll be good to go. So that's it. Not too scary. All right, folks, that is how you QRO. We're gonna do some contesting with it. We're gonna do some live streams with it. You will see more of this amplifier on the channel coming up in the future. Might even win an FT8 off with it. You never know. So be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of that action. And YouTube's funky with notifications, so ring that bell. Otherwise, you may never know when we go QRO. Thanks for being awesome.